Alright guys, welcome back to the bench. I'm really excited about this package, so let me open it and I'll show you what's inside. Alright, so what we have here is a package from Waveshare. And inside, rather well wrapped, are two modules. Um, let's look at the big one here first. What this is, um, is an e-ink display. Make sure that focuses. So e-ink displays are basically uh, pretty similar to like um, a Kindle screen. Uh, so that they, they actually take up no power when the image isn't changing uh, and then this one is mounted on a carrier board here uh, which takes SPI um, and what's really neat about these ones is that they run off of 3.3 volts let me see if I can focus in on that there so where previous uh, displays from what I understand had to run on quite a bit higher voltage uh, this can run on lower voltage so it's it can be used with, um, you know, Raspberry Pi or an Arduino type microcontroller, uh, and I'm going to be using it with an ESP8266. It comes with this cable, which is already broken out in uh, Dupont style, you know, female header connectors. So I'm really excited about that. And then the other one is just a different size. and I'll put links in the description to where I found them. Uh, I bought them directly from Waveshare, but I'll also put a link to uh, eBay where you can get them. Um, this one's quite a bit smaller, as you can see, although I think um, the resolution is pretty similar, so the pixel density must be higher on this. Um, and this one I bought, I actually originally, I had previously bought uh, just the display but I realized that um, the electronics on here were a little bit more uh, convoluted than I had thought originally, and I wasn't sure where to get that um, that connector for the display. So I decided to uh, just buy the whole unit pre-assembled uh, instead of trying to hassle with building my own, although I may do that eventually. And just the display was, I think, $11 for this one and maybe 13 for just the display on this one. And then uh, together, I think, as a unit, this is like $21 or something, including shipping. And uh, this one was a few dollars more, but I don't remember the exact price. Again, links will be in the description, so uh, you can find them there. Both of these come with a cable so that you can connect them up. To, it's a JST style connector and then you can use that to connect this up then um, to an Arduino style thing. They do also provide um, a board that connects directly to a Raspberry Pi header. I believe that's for this one and it just has the Pi header on the back um, which is pretty cool. So one of the really neat things about these is not only do they have really great uh, energy usage but also um, the they work really well in uh, bright light um, because they don't that really high contrast ratio uh, because they don't uh, rely on a backlight in order to to have contrast so one of the things I, I well the reason I bought this is I want to use it for the weather station project. Basically, I want to put this on my bedside table so I can put the weather information here and also like a clock type in information. Um, and then because it doesn't have a backlight, I can just leave it running all the time and it, it won't like keep me up at night or anything. Uh, and I may just add in like, I don't know, an LED or something so I can look at it if I want to. Um, but yeah, I've been waiting for these. I'm really excited, and uh, 
hopefully I will be putting up a video where I improve the receiving side of the weather station um, using one of these. But before we do that, uh, let me just interface this with an Arduino, um, or actually I, I might just use a, an ESP, and just uh, show you it working. In order to get this working, I, I went to the WaveShare website. As you can see, this is the product page in their wiki for this particular device. Um, a little bit lower here working with Arduino. They talk about how to connect it up to uh, an Uno. Uh, we'll be using a Wemos D1 Mini, but uh, the connections kind of tell you which pin of the SPI it actually goes to. Um, and if you look at the top here, it does explain all the different pins. So I just chose a pin uh, for things that weren't directly on the SPI bus, I just chose a pin that was nearby. Um, and for things that were on the SPI bus, like I used the Mosey pin uh, so that that would work. And the clock pin, obviously. So at the bottom here, they have some code, their demo code here. Um, and I'll just download that and load it up. Okay, so I've loaded up the code from WaveShare's site uh, in Arduino. Uh, basically, it's just a 7-zip file, and inside there is an Arduino folder which has a string example in it. Uh, this is that example. I did have to change over here in the EPD drive gpio.h the, uh, these values. I changed them to be pins on the ESP8266 Wemos board that I'm using for this demo. And I chose these pins, uh, but um, you could choose different ones. And then over here, basically, this is the demo that they had, but I changed the font to slightly bigger, uh, moved some things slightly, and in the loop section, I just added, basically, I'm printing out millis. This sprintf here is just to write millis to a string so that I can output it, because I'm using the display string function. And this function basically just takes a x, a y coordinate, a string, and a font size. Uh, in this particular example, it appears that only 12 point and 16 point fonts have been uh, pre-generated, or at least those are the only ones that I got working. All right, and uh, if we go over and take a look at the board, I'll show you what this looks like when it's running. All right, I've already flashed the example on here, so I'll just give this power and show you what it looks like. Um, it turns on, it basically uh, refreshes the screen, because with inks you have to flash them black to white. It has a delay in there, and then it writes the word hello world, um, and then, I don't know if you can see that, but it's printing millis, and it it's just a little over 500 uh, milliseconds, so approximately two frames per second uh, for a string of that size. And I don't know how long it would take for uh, a longer string, but that's pretty good for my purposes. That's uh, more than adequate. Alright guys, as usual my links will be in the description, but that wraps everything up for this video. I just want to thank you very much for watching, uh, and if you wouldn't mind taking a second to comment, rate, or even subscribe, that would be really helpful. And again, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.